Hey guys, welcome back to Chaos Core Tech. My name's Garrett, and today I have another chest set for you. Now, uh, this one is a little bit different, and actually this whole video is going to be just a little bit different, um, and that is because I got an SLA printer. Now, I don't get to keep it, but I have it for a bit to do a review. So, I'm testing out SLA technologies and um, just sort of getting my feet wet and understanding if I really like this technology or not. Now, I actually was going to film an unboxing and everything for this printer and show you guys, um, but when I got the box a few weeks ago, um, all the necessary stuff wasn't in there, and um, so I contacted them, they sent me the extra pieces, but still everything wasn't in there. Um, luckily I was able to find substitutes for what I was missing, but long story short, I didn't want to post the unboxing because um, one, it was, it was really like fragmented, not complete, and two, it wouldn't really be an accurate representation of um, getting one of these printers and unboxing it. So I didn't feel like that was much value. But in this video, I will show you my first print, and it was this Maker Coin. Now, this is my Maker Coin, um, and I printed it out. I actually had a failed print before this, but uh, this one came out perfectly, and I absolutely love this thing. I will put in some close up footage of this so you can really see what I'm talking about. Um, it's absolutely gorgeous, and it's printed at 0.1 millimeter layer height. So it just really goes to show you how detailed these things can be. But you guys didn't come here to see that, you came to see the chess set. So let's get in and start modeling these things.
Okay, so this is normally where I would um, show the printing of these and then my wife post-processing. But um, I'm leaving these as is, they are not painted at all. They are just purely off the printer and then cleaned and UV cured and stuff like that. Um, so there is no post-processing, but this printer is actually completely enclosed. There is um, a little bit of glass, uh, maybe plexiglass or something on the front of it, but it is heavily tinted. And um, the reason for that is to help shield your eyes from the laser inside. Um, but the unfortunate side effect of that is that uh, you can't see what's going on inside there. You can tell that there's a light in there, but you can't see the detail on the models or anything like that. Um, and that also means that I cannot capture um, any sort of footage of these printings, any time lapses or anything like that. So that kind of stinks. But I can show you a few pictures on screen here of uh, when I was taking these things off the printer because they look gorgeous when they just come off. And I actually tried printing one of them at an angle. It didn't work very well, but I'll talk more about that in a second. But first, I wanted to talk a little bit about my design process on these. So um, as you guys know, it's Fusion 360, but I want to talk a little bit more just about the creative side of it. So I set out with the goal to make something that could really only be appreciated on an SLA printer because I knew they were sending me some clear resin and looking around online I knew that clear resins are absolutely beautiful most of the time and so I wanted to make something that would really kind of show that off and um, give me something that I couldn't easily do on an FDM machine and really these pieces at this detail level I wouldn't be able to do on my FDM machines. So my basic thought process was what would look good in crystal form and that's how I came um, to these shapes. You'll notice there's a lot of like obelisk type shapes and actually I had a family member describe them as um, architectural looking but I think that's giving me a little too much credit. Um, I was just trying to have fun and create some cool looking crystal things. So I've got these tiny little obelisks for pawns and then the rook is one of my favorite pieces. Um, it's just four crystals that go up and the top of them as is at an angle and I just think it looks super cool. I'm really happy with how that piece came out. The um, knights are just these big sort of, they're just a ball on a pedestal pretty much and there's some lines around the outside to give it a little bit of detail. The knights are always the weirdest pieces um, and I didn't want to create something horse-like so I just went with this. It doesn't look like a horse or a knight but I think it works. Um, the bishops have to be another one of my favorites. They are just this swirl with a ball on the top. And they kind of remind me of um, water elemental things like you see a lot in animes um, and different artistic pieces when you want to depict water doing cool things. This is really what it reminds me of and I really like this piece. Also this piece is the only piece you'll need support on because there's nothing that supports the underside of the ball there. King, as you can see here, is kind of like the pawn, just a, a taller obelisk and the sides are um, chamfered just a little bit more to get a little bit of a different shape. And the queen is sort of the same shape, but it's basically just an obelisk, but the whole thing is twisted. And I think that looks really, really cool, especially when you rotate it like this. So if you guys wanna print this out for yourself, links to the files are down in the description. Um, like I said, they should all print without supports except for the bishop there. And before we close the video out, I did wanna talk about some of the um, SLA specific stuff regarding these prints. So um, these were pretty much the first thing aside from that maker coin that I had printed. So if you've seen how SLA works, they usually print upside down. And um, so that's what I did with these. And so they're just on the bed, completely flat on the base there. And I noticed that when uh, the print finished, I had a heck of a time removing the prints. I actually had to take a hammer to it. And that is just something I don't like to do with new machinery, especially something as delicate and expensive as an SLA machine. But I got it off, um, so I was like, maybe that's not the answer. And I had heard people talk about printing things at an angle. And so I tried that too. I tried like a 10 degree angle, and then I tried a 45 degree angle with a couple different pieces. And I did not have good results. Um, one of the pieces was very, very rounded on the bottom. The rest of it printed pretty much okay, but um, it just wasn't flat on the bottom. And it, and you kind of need a flat bottom with chess pieces. Next, I tried to print a pawn. This was at a 45 degree angle. And it looks pretty normal until you get close and you notice that it is warped like crazy. It's like a funhouse mirror version of it. I'll put some close up footage here. And that was just because it didn't stick to the supports. Um, I had them on the max thickness and density. So um, I don't know what else I could have done there. But I did kind of look into um, why you should print it at an angle and stuff like that. 
and I guess it's to uh, reduce the surface area as much as possible because it has to peel away from the resin when it's done with each layer and I guess the suction forces on that um, have a tendency to pull the part away um, from either the supports or the print bed. So with these pieces, um, putting them at an angle actually increases the surface area in a lot of cases. So um, I went back to just printing them flat and I just had to take a paint scraper and a hammer to kind of chisel them off. And, and I really don't like that, but I didn't know what else to do because um, the, the typical bed leveling things on FDM machines do not work for this machine. The leveling process is completely different. Um, and it's not tweakable, if that makes sense. But anyway, I will get into more details about that when I actually do the review of the printer. But one more thing I did want to talk about was um, the clarity of these. So if you can kind of see, they have a yellowish tinge to them. And the thicker pieces are more yellow, and that's because there's more resin on the inside. Um, and I know there are things you can do to sort of polish these up and make them look nicer. Um, and my wife and I are going to be experimenting with that on these pieces. So um, I, might, I might post an update video if I ever um, kind of figure out the process for that. But um, I will be experimenting, and if you kind of want to see more results on that, follow me on Twitter. I'm at Chaos Cortec. I'll be posting my results. Um, and if I come up with something really good, I'll, put, um, I'll post a YouTube video. Okay, guys, thank you for watching, and sorry for the unorganizedness of this video. It was... Um, it's, it's been kind of a learning experience with the SLA printer. I'm going to have to adjust the way I do things just a little bit to, to test out this printer. Alright guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.